give the Lord Jesus a shout of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. My prayer that this shall be, that tonight shall be a night of encounter indeed for everyone. We serve a God of times and seasons. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. After two days, will he revive us? And on the third day, he will raise us up. Somebody is changing position tonight. God is raising somebody to another level tonight. <laughs> Sometimes God was speaking that um, when you come to the land that your father has promised you, you shall sow all manner of plant a man of trees, and it shall be unholy for three years. On the fourth year, you make it an offering to the Lord, and from the fifth year, you keep eating from it without end. <laughs> Five years, so. First five years in Lego, boom. The church began to have some expression. The second five years, an explosion. The explosion is on. Just be conscious of the timings of God and walk your way inside it. This is the third day. Anybody who cares to believe is changing position tonight. <laughs> Moreover, this is the seventh or the twenty-first Shiloh, and at the end of every seven years, you make a release. Somebody's slavery is ending tonight. Somebody's servitude is ending tonight. Somebody's struggle is finally ending tonight. Every word session is an impartation session. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. I said one day, Satan has no power over you. Somebody who has been impotent at age 40 got loosed. The Spirit enters when the heart is open. The Spirit can't enter a heart that is not open. My son, the Spirit cannot enter a heart. I knock. If you open your heart, I come in. It doesn't force his way in. No, he doesn't. He does. Somebody's waiting for Saturday when God is ready today. <laughs> Amen. He's ready today. He's ready today. Somebody is receiving that impartation of the spirit of faith tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. When the mantle of the spirit of faith upon again fell on me, it was via the word. It, it was the word, it was in a session like this. It was not okay, let's go and see him in the office. It was raw word session. I, and I burst into tears uncontrollably. 
I love to get myself together in a public meeting, but uh, it was beyond me. And I heard the Lord say to me, my son David, the baton has been passed over to you. He said, are you the only one? I don't know, but I know I had. I took it. Any man took and fall on a million people, sir. He took up the spirit that was upon Moses and gave upon to, to 70 elders. So he can impart on everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. Amen. My prayer is that no one will be left out of God's agenda for change of level. Yeah. As you catch a revelation, it changes your position. As we behold him as in a glass, we are changed. Every revelation is ordained to effect a change of position. A change of position. As we behold them, and if you see me when I'm cut off, it shall be yours. As we behold them as in a glass, we are changed, changed from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord, as by the Spirit of the Lord. So get ready. You know, in that meeting, I was sitting and panting and craving. Then suddenly I saw the face of Kennedy again changed to that of a little child. And I saw oil coming down through his cheeks to his suit. And then something electric was fired into me and my level changed. Now, somebody's here tonight, amen, as you maintain a strong, unbroken focus on what the Holy Ghost is doing from this altar tonight, something will be fired into your life. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't know any pressure. Zero anxiety. You know the meaning of that? The spirit of faith. It brings you into rest. Undeniable rest. Touchable rest. That must enter into your life tonight. Everything that represents unrest in your life must pack and go tonight. <laughs> they that believe do enter into rest. Um, <laughs> Therefore, labor, just engage in tense focus. Because God has ordained to launch you into that realm of no limit. Amen. And faith is the gateway to it. Amen. And the spirit of faith is the guarantee for it. <laughs> you just keep changing levels without sweat, without struggle. Amen. Now, that is your portion here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We are on in that series exploring faith, understanding faith as our access to the realms of no limits. No limits. Sometimes we were about four on the staff, then eight, and then ten, and um, we began going, then the first 10,000, the first 20,000, and uh, uh, excess of 30,000 today. Zero stress. I pray that my God will bring you into your era of rest. <laughs> Not by 
by power and not by might. Every feat is an accomplishment of the spirit of faith. What more shall I say for time will fail me? And he began to list those giants who through faith, who through what? Subdued kingdoms. Wrought right. They won't join the corruption of hell. I thought that's go about with. They wrought righteousness. They stopped the mouth of lions. They quenched the furnace of fire. Women received their dead back to life. Amen. <laughs> Through what? Faith. Through faith. You can't put a human flesh inside a fiery furnace and not fry. You will fry. There's enough oil to fry him up. But no. Faith will break that limit. There was no smell of fire on them. So it's not this, not all this make believe faith we're talking about, but the shield of faith. Something you hold and you know you're holding it. The shield of faith. Something you are holding and you know you're holding it. The things we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled, 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 handled. Faith is in your hand as a weapon. Faith you know is in your hand. Praise God. Praise God. Now, Tonight, many will return with the shield of faith. Yeah. The shield of faith is the spirit of faith. Many will return from here tonight with the spirit of faith. In your hand. Not just in your heart, it's in your hand. You will it at any time you want, and it answers you. <laughs> we were involved in a kind of accident, sometimes, or a potential accident. And then the driver hit one substance on the highway, and the car was going somewhere else. And my wife said, In Jesus' name, I said, No, no, no. Once he said, No. Don't say too many Jesus' name, <laughs> I said, We are not hitting that pavement, about six inches, one foot, the car stopped. Faith is ever in command under any condition. I therefore decree tonight an end to all your struggling to make things happen. Yeah. It's the key to a world of rest. Amen. It's the key to what? A world of rest. It's the key to a world of rest. And when you are at rest, you have provoked the supernatural act of God. Be still and you will know that I'm God. <laughs> I'll be exalted in the earth. I'll be exalted among the heathen. So, that rest is the platform for supernatural manifestations. Faith brings you into rest, which provokes supernatural manifestations on its own accord. Be still, and you will know that I am God. I shall be exalted on the earth. I shall be exalted among the hidden. Be still. It takes faith to be still in the midst of storm. Jesus said, why are you so fearful, man? Why is it that you have no faith? I was sleeping on the pillow because I'm in the realm of rest. <laughs> have you ever seen me react to anybody who says anything to me? No. <laughs> I'm smarter than them. I'm just at rest, pleasing Jesus. I'm just as too sure of what tomorrow. Sir, I'm too sure. No, we don't know what tomorrow. I'm too sure. I'm walking with the one who is in charge of tomorrow. And there is nothing negative in my tomorrow other than what he has spoken. Somebody's blessed. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Come and say, my third day is here. I'm changing position today. Today is the third day of the Shiloh of release. 
my own release is tonight. Say it convincingly. Look at that issue that seems to be holding you down. Say, my own release from you is tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Understanding faith as our access to the world of no limits. That's your asset, and that's my asset. Let me quickly first take us through this light from heaven. What is it that empowers faith to break limits? What's in it? that causes faith to empower us to become limit breakers. What is in faith that empowers believers to become limit breakers? Limit breakers. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Now, please know before I start, that without a right heart, you are not a candidate for faith to deliver. He <laughs> said, your heart is not right. You have no part or lot in this matter. <laughs> you don't have a part or lot with God without a right heart. We have the principles of faith and we have the power of faith. Any donkey can assess the principles of faith. <laughs> but it takes only men and women with a right heart to command, to experience the power of faith. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. So, so there is the principles of faith and there is the power of of faith. He said, my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Please sell for me this thing. Those of I lay my hands on me, we receive the Holy Ghost, say, you, you, you are dumb. And then he released that, those words on him. You have no part or lot in this matter because your heart is not right with God. Your heart is not right with God. You can't be lying and lying and stealing and stealing and expect faith to walk. God is not a magician. God is not a, we had a very, a whole lot of teaching on conscience, the power of conscience in putting your faith to work and seeing your faith walk. So if you are not interested in the right heart, you are not a candidate. Deception should go. Manipulation should go. Amen. Now, as a pastor of a few years, I've seen quite a number of things in my life. Things you can't believe. And that's why God gave us the, that strong word on redemption until you are saved. Not every founder is saved, not every elder is saved. Not every pastor is saved. Not every bishop, archbishop, primate bishop. No. no. <laughs> there are men who have never experienced all things becoming new. Everything is still old. They are just not there. And when you are now born again and your heart is not right, you become another Gehazi. You wake it not. He didn't know that, you know, he, he defied the rod. <laughs> Elisha looked at the rod and said, this rod that this man has touched won't work. <laughs> so he laid upon the child. Amen. Your heart is not right. You have no part or lot in this thing. Please, wake up. <laughs> God is not a magician. Wake up.
Wake up. No scripture we ever cancel out another. Oh, we prophesied on your street. We did many mighty things. I know you not. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. We need a right heart to maintain a fruitful walk with God. And it's by faith we walk and not by sight. So we need a right heart. You need a right heart. You need a right heart. You need a right heart. But thank God he said, and I will give you a new heart. I will take the heart of stone away from you, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Then I will put my spirit within you, and it will turn you to a brand new person. Somebody's experiencing that. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. What is in faith that empowers believers to operate in the realm of no limits? Number one, let's take what I said now as introduction. Number one, faith provokes the hand of God upon the believer. Who had believed our report and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. What does the hand of God offer? It offers one favor. And the king gave unto me according to the good hand of my God that's upon me. Nehemiah chapter 2. So the good hand of God, verse 8, unleashes favor on God's people and nothing flies like favor. Nothing flies like favor. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So when they go, they will never go empty and destroy the Egyptians. Overflow of favor. Overflow of favor. Overflow. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made me to stand out. You have made my mountain to stand strong. When you hide your face and withdraw your favor, I'm troubled. So God's favor causes God's people to triumph without sweat. Number three, God's hand grants divine speed in our pursuit. The hand goes upon a line and he outran the horse and the chariots of Ahab to the gates of Jezreel, the hand of God, unleashing supernatural speed. There are people here today, God will fast your life forward supernaturally. <laughs> Some things that will not have happened in 50 years will happen like a dream within 2020. <laughs> I said the year 2020 will be your year of supernatural speed. Yeah. Not that everything will be changing level, everything will be jumping level. Yeah. We'll be jumping levels. Yeah. We'll be jumping levels. Yeah. Can you imagine Joseph slept last night as a prisoner and slept the following night as a prime minister? What is speed? What breaking all protocols, all protocols. You are not a native, you don't belong to any political party, you don't have any identity anywhere. I mean, and you are coming from prison, convicted of a rape. And everything was contrary to the massive changes that came along on his life. Now, in the name of Jesus by the hand of God that your faith will begin to provoke. <laughs> Such jump of levels like Joseph will become your experience. Yeah. 
I mean, Joseph's experience is a raw divination of breaking limits. It is clean. It is clear. It is unmistakable. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in this third night, we are God has vowed to change your position by revelation. The hand of God will keep attending to your life. The kind of favor that has never been recorded in any book on earth will be locating many people here. You will not know misfortune anymore. What is in faith that empowers believers to operate in the realm of no limit? Faith provokes divine intervention at will, at will, divine intervention at will. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Say, yeah, Lord, okay, touch the eyes according to your faith, be it unto you. Divine intervention provoked at will, at will. You are not hanging on and waiting for what will happen. You provoke it by faith. <laughs> they were bringing that man down through the roof. You know the story? Jesus saw their faith. He said, I'm responsible. I'm committed. Look, these fellows have committed me. And as they brought the chap down, the man down paralyzed, take up, he said, your sins are forgiven. Take up your bed and go. They say, we have never seen it in this version. You provoke divine in intervention by faith at will. When your faith is on fire on any subject, you have committed God to intervene. 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 I don't know what matter is confronting you as you brace up your faith tonight in God and in his prophet. That's what is missing today in the charismatic. Faith in God and faith in his prophet. Belief in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Belief also is prophet and so shall you keep changing level to prosper me to keep making satisfactory supernatural progress. Supernatural progress. You believe in God, he confirms his word. You believe in his prophet, the grace on the prophet, the manifestation of the gift of God in the prophet begin to manifest in your life. So tonight must mark the end of your being on the same spot. Mm. Whether you like it or not, prophets, are here to stay on the earth. Yes, yes. Prophets will be here till Jesus returns. Yes. And you must hear them to move forward. They said, look, send somebody here to, let's send Lazarus to go and tell. He said, no, Lazarus for what? They have Moses and the prophet. If they won't hear them, they won't hear anyone that raised from the dead. Amen. Amen. Some destinies are tied to what is going on now. Yes. So if you like this, connect. If you like, connect. Some destinies are tied to what is going on right now because this prophet is sent to you. That's why you are here. Wherever you may be under the earth today, this prophet is sent to you. That's why he called you there. That's why he drew you there. I am saying by the hand of the Lord that you won't lack divine intervention again. Lazarus said, today, now today, I'm not coming back again. Today is today. Jesus! They say, shut up. He said, shut what? Jesus too still. He said, there's somebody calling me in there. There is somebody calling me there. There's somebody whose faith is committing me there. Somebody's drawing me by his faith. Be a good ecology. Iran. What do you want, La Lazarus? I mean, uh, What's his name? Bartimaeus? That time it's right. Your sight? Receive your sight. Thy faith has set you free. Faith is a provoker 
of divine intervention. Don't stand there and say it will happen someday. It won't happen until your faith says it must happen. Your faith must come awake and say it must happen now. It must happen now. It must happen now. Now, somebody set him, is being set free from sickness now. Somebody is being set free from disease now. The oppression of the devil is come to an end in somebody's life now. And so, he got free. Number three, what is in faith that empowers believers to break limits? Luke chapter 8 and verse 40 to 48. We saw the woman with the issue of blood who touched the hem of his garment and the healing power flew into our body. Faith draws on the raw power of God for our desired change of story. Faith draws on the raw power of God for your desired change of story. Faith draws on the raw power of God for your desired change of story. Faith draws on the raw power of the omnipotent God, the all-powerful God, the God with whom nothing is impossible for your desired change of story. The power of God answers to faith. <laughs> and destroys the siege of impossibilities. Ooh, the power of God. The power of God. So when your faith is at work, you are tapping into the power of God for your change of story. Immediately the flow of blood stops. Amen. The source notwithstanding, it stopped. <laughs> she has spent 12 years and wasted all her living upon physicians, but could not be healed. But when her faith came alive, it tapped into the power of God and gave her for free what she was dying to have. There are many people here tonight. Your situation can't challenge the power of God. So with your faith on the line, that situation bows to you tonight. That situation bows to you tonight. So faith secures the hand of God and faith provokes favor from heaven and faith provokes the flow of the power of God into your life that will stop the workings of the wicked on your life. Number four, Faith commits God to confirm his word. It commits God's integrity to confirm his word. If you believe not, yet you are best faithful, he cannot deny himself. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. God is not a man that he should lie, he's not a man that he should repent. When faith comes alive, God's integrity is committed to confirm his word. This sign shall follow them that believe. And so they went forth and preached everywhere. God also walking with them, confirming the word 
with signs following. Confirming the word with signs following. I never say we will build this church in one year. I won't say, I don't have capacity to say, I have enough small sense to know that it is practically impossible by any human logic or techniques or new technology. It's not possible. All the natural and technical factors are contrary. But when God says it, his integrity is committed to confirming. So whatever word you believe, sir, commits God's integrity to confirm. That he took my infirmity. He, he took. Not that he was coming to take and then he was delayed. And he, he, perhaps he couldn't get across. Some fellows truncated his journey. But he already took. Yes. I saw it. And because nobody doubts what he sees, I believed it hook, line, and sinker. Yes, sir. And I declared it. And I'm coming to that. I declare, yeah. I can never be sick. 40 years plus ago. 40 years. Yes, I've walked myself to some dead end in terms of tiredness. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You do two days, three days, four days, and you are not sleeping, you are likely to be tired. But I don't need anything done to sleep for a few hours and come back. <laughs> you remember the bulldog story? <laughs> he can't come in until the bigger bulldog ran away. <laughs> he can't come in. So when they say rest, I say it is as I walk that my body sums up. <laughs> it has been summing up like that, though, not that uh, you, you can you see you are running a risk. I've been running the risk you know, for many years. Amen. Life. You catch it, you commit God. There is somebody here tonight. The end has come to your struggling for survival. I don't know how you feel. I've not been on vacation for 38 years. I'm having a nice time with Jesus. I'm enjoying myself. They say, oh, poor you. That's why I'm as poor as I am. I'm having a nice time, sir. You know something? Your story must change tonight. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong about going on vacation. There is nothing wrong. I'm telling you the truth. Well, you know, apostles are as men appointed to death, so <laughs> we have a nice time. The good news is you will not be called sick anymore. <laughs> He said, none of the inhabitants of that city shall say, I am sick. Yes. No, none of the inhabitants of that land shall say, I am sick. Amen. So you have entered that land tonight. Amen. The land that kept me sickness free for 40 years. It is just one verse. Himself too, your infirmity. One verse, Matthew chapter eight verse seventeen. Took, took his past tense, oh, past tense, <laughs> past tense. He took it, he took it, and bear our sicknesses. That means I'm not supposed to live pain-free and a sickness-free life. Now, from today. I welcome you to that sickness-free and pay-free realm of life. You believe it? Let me have your confident amen. Let me check that scriptures, Jeremiah 31, I think verse 34. None of the inhabitants of the land shall say, I am sick. You have entered that land of rest. Amen. He has sworn to bring us to that land of rest and you are welcome to that land of rest. Amen. No more oppression of the devil on your life. Amen. 
The battle over your head is over tonight. There is one of our young ladies here. She's 81 or going to 82. The doctor had to come to the house. That we have not been seeing you over a long time. He said, Jesus has set me free. Now, as at that time, 19 years, he has not known sickness. Jesus took care of her. As her age, so her strength was growing. I pray that this night marks the end of I am sick in your life. If there is anybody lying in sickness tonight, anybody on a sick bed, anybody from your household under any torment of the wicked, I send the same word of deliverance and rescue to them in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You must have heard that health is worth over time. Nothing is more valuable than life, health, and vitality next to salvation. And that is offered for free in Christ. You don't have to pay for any goods twice. Therefore, all health issues under the sound of my voice is turned to a testimony. <laughs> Operating in the realm of no limits and Commanding things that eyes have not seen or ears had requires physical strength, among others. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? <laughs> Wake up today, go down tomorrow. That's not how to command exploit. No. All the men leading in one thing or another in the world today, they are men of extraordinary strength. Men of extraordinary strength. You are joining that team tonight. They will look for you in those hospitals and not find you anymore. The doctors may come calling you and say, I've left the company. You know, after Bartimaeus got his sight. Did he go to sit back again with those blind people? No, he went home in color. He went home in grand style. Now, you are leaving every form of health care activity from tonight. Now, don't get me wrong. It is not sin to go to hospital. But you need to be sick to think of it. Do you go for a weekend in hospital? They say, where are you going now? I'm going to Mayo Clinic for a weekend. No, no, no. 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 They are for those who are sick and have health concerns. So if it takes sickness and health concerns from your life, what are you doing there? You say, I just came to see you. Uh, can I sleep here for three nights? No. <laughs> So apart from going to deliver your children, you will not be found on any hospital bed again. No one here shall be involved in any motor accident again. No one shall be involved in any motor bike accident again. Isaiah 33 and verse 24. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. And that is prophetic about the era of redemption. So we are not supposed to be sick again 
Because the same day our sins were forgiven, he, by his stripes, he healed our bodies. By his stripes, he healed our bodies. So in the name of Jesus, by the authority of that word, you are now listed among the inhabitants of the land that shall never say again, I am sick. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, oh, earth, earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Now, wherever you are, take off your shoes. <laughs> Amen. The word has gone into this earth. <laughs> and you'll be sipping into your body. And in the name of Jesus, tonight marks the end of the siege of sickness and disease in your life. I decree that tonight marks the end of sickness and disease in your life. In the name of Jesus, that terminal disease is caused finally tonight. They were bringing somebody in from Cote d'Ivoire last year who had been mad for 20 years. Stark madness, banding chains. As they crossed the gate into Shiloh, all the demons left. Now, you are not at the gate of Shiloh, you are now here. Every ground you are around the world is an extension of Shiloh ground. Therefore, with your soles of the feet on the ground of where you are now, you shall no longer say, I am sick. You shall no longer say, I am sick. Sickness is ended in your life tonight. Cancer is destroyed in your body tonight. Every terminal disease is terminated in your body tonight. Your third day of change of position is finally here. Your resources will no longer be wasted in treating your health. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Our first miracle here in the first Shiloh was one of our precious ones that was crippled for 32 years. I used to call it 23. When I saw the paper, I saw it was written 32. I called, I said, is it 32? They said 32. Right inside Shiloh on Faith Arm, something like dew dropped on her body. And the body rose up. Amen. Amen. Now, not just that, she was here when she turned 60. Hallelujah. And climbed the altar by herself and said, I was the woman that was healed and raised from being crippled. 1999, I'm still on my feet today. <laughs> now, what that means is that everything that is dropping off your body now will never enter back into you. <laughs> Blood pressure is over. Yeah. Hypertension is over. Yeah. Diabetes is over. Yeah. Whatever drops from you on this ground today, wherever you are standing, will never re-enter into your life. Yeah. That testimony is about God humiliating the oppression of the devil by releasing that 20-year-old madman from madness. So every oppression of the devil 
that came with you to Shiloh, I command those demons out of your life. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Please don't ever mock prophetic instructions. You just become a victim. Now, one day I asked the people to take the highest currency they may have in their pocket and place it on the ground and put their feet on it because they will not have financial concerns anymore. <laughs> so, after ministering to the people, I didn't remember to tell them to take the money off. Well, you have not closed the service. So, somebody used his own leg to carry his own money. They may not ask us to take this money. They may ask us to come and collect it. <laughs> Sir, it was... Mm. Mm. As soon as he took that money off, I said, please, everybody, take off that money from the ground. And the Holy Ghost said to him, you have just missed it. Everything turned upside down for him, sir. Sir, he has no phone. An official, an executive of the place where he was. What is the money, sir? 20 naira. 20 naira. Sir? The Holy Ghost said, you have just missed it. People who take prophetic instructions for mockery, they end up as victims. Caution. Caution. Without any cause, they threw him out of the job. Without any cause, they threw him out of the job. God said to me, hand it over to me now concerning Covenant University. And I said, how? He said, lay flat on this floor before me and I will take over. You mean the chancellor before all the pioneer students and their parents? Won't they think he's mad? They can't think anything. I just lay flat on that floor. See where Covenant is today. <laughs> Amen. In those early days, we were servicing Covenant University with 120 million a month. 120 million, million a month to run. And we didn't feel it because he took over. Yes. By a raw instruction that only sensitive and those who choose to humble themselves before the Lord will take. I lay down on that floor. Heat came and said, What are you doing here? Ooh. After dancing around and then we sweat. Lay down with my new shirt. Amen. Please don't ever mock the strange works and the strange acts of God in your life. I've been in it for years and I know how it works. Now, with everybody whose feet is on the ground tonight, you will never say again, I am sick. Somebody is deaf. You are hearing now. Somebody is called blind. You are beginning to see now. Somebody came here with poison. The poison is not neutralized now. Somebody here under the siege of barrenness. The barrenness is over now. Somebody here under the spell, under marital spell of any form, that spell is broken now. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated. What is in faith that empowers believers to operate in the realm of no limit. Faith has power to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. It has power to level the barriers on the path of your progress. It has power to level all barriers on the path of your progress. 
He said, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16, the Bible said, above all, taking the shield of faith, we are with it shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. And so they went, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And the fire had no power on them. Neither was there a smell of fire on their bodies. Because they trusted in their God. They trusted in their God. Faith has power to quench all the fiery darts of hell. Set against your life and destiny. Faith has the power. Faith has the power. Faith has the power. Many years ago, maybe I mentioned this sometimes here, that I was up in a place to minister. And after ministering, I was drunk with the faith of my superiority over persuasion and power. So I said, come on now. How many of you are witches here? Stand up. And they stood up in their number. I said, wait a minute. Sit down. I don't mean somebody call you a witch. You are a practicing witch. Would you like to stand? Stand. And they stood up. And I said, come on here. What do you do with the devil? He said, anytime we want to suck blood, we get on the highway, cause the vehicle to some assault, and suck the blood of the victims. I said, what of when people like us are coming? When we sense a higher power. On the way, we clear off the highways. When we sense a higher power, what power? The faith power. 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 It makes barriers clear the way on their own. Every barrier resisting your access to that realm of no limit, I see them clear the way for you. They will be sending for you from places you least expected. Oh no, we'll be locating you from the four corners of the earth. There are some businesses today just in one location, before Shiloh 2020, you are across many nations. There are certain careers today that seem to be going down the drain. But in the name of Jesus, you will soon be located as a global location. You will soon be located as a global solution provider. You believe it, let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Who more has gone? 1982, April 10, the Lord spoke to me. You'll be speaking from one spot and you'll be broadcast live on the screen across the nations of the earth. Now, that's not easy to consume because there was no internet technology that time, not here. So the question is, which technology will make you be speaking from one spot and the world will be hearing you at the same time? It was not conceivable then. No. So God created it. God created it to fulfill his word. Yes, yes. Amen. I have not heard from them, but it will not be less than 140, 145, 150 nations that is hooked to this service now. Because you believe it. Barriers clear the way when faith is in play. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, everything limiting your access to God's ultimate plan for your life I command them brought down.
Now, this is the prophetic base of that liberation family. And you know what God said? A great building came down from heaven, and as he hit the ground, it was split into splinter houses. And the same fire upon the altar of the great house was burning on the altar of the smaller houses. So wherever people are gathered tonight is part of that splinter house. And the same fire burning here now is burning where you are. Somebody will testify this night. Somebody will testify of his or her liberty this night. The barriers are broken. The chains are falling. Finally, what is in faith that empowers believers to operate in the realm of no limits? Faith engrafts believers into divinity. They are by empowering us to accomplish the impossible. Romans 11, 17 to 23. If some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wide olive tree what grafted in among them, and with them be partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive, boast against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Now, thou will say the branches were broken off, that I may be grafted in. Yes. Because of unbelief they were broken up. And ye stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fair. So when faith is in place, you are grafted into God. You become a partaker of the root and the fatness of the olive. What is working in God begins to work in you. When unbelief comes, you are disconnected. When faith comes, you are grafted in. So faith is an engraftment into divinity that empowers believers to do the impossible. It's an engraftment. You are grafted into God. God is grafted into you. Man. And then you begin to function at the frequency of God. At the frequency of God. At the frequency of God. He said, by, through unbelief, they were broken up. <laughs> and if they come back to faith, they shall be grafted in again. So it's an unending opportunity. Yes. Every time faith comes alive on any subject, you are grafted into God at that moment. Whatever God can do, you can command it to happen. It's all of faith. All of faith. All of faith. All of faith. So it's not one force that was operating somewhere else and we're operating somewhere else. We are in collaboration. Yes, faith at work brings the hand of God to be on your life. Yes. That equals favor. Amen. Amen. That equals divine speed. Praise God. It provokes divine intervention at will. You and God operating together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what is in faith. So it's wisdom to keep building your faith. To keep building your faith. To keep building your faith. So that this manifestation will become real in your life. That's the way it works. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord the biggest clap of him, everybody. Amen. Now, for you to experience these manifestations, one thing you must jealously guard is your tongue. Your tongue. Your tongue. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Faith has its seat in the heart, but has its expression in the mouth. So it is tongue fired faith that delivers. Whatever you are ashamed to say, God is ashamed to confirm. 
what you are not going to say, you will never see. You shall have whatever you say before mockers. Whatever you say before gainsayers, you shall have whatsoever you say. When I said I cannot be sick, some people were very mad at me. But I, that's, that's their choice. They don't have any problem. I'm not relating with them. I'm relating with God. Am I sick now? You won't say it. You won't see it. Please understand these things. One of our precious ones here was being monitored by some demonic woman who we call every morning. She was waiting on the Lord for the floor room. How are you doing now? I said, anybody that asks you anything, I was teaching here, say to that person, God has done it. Yes. So this woman called her the following day of that message. I said, ah, you my daughter. He said, God has done it. And the woman shouted, my heart, my chest, my chest, my chest, and died. You see, people are just there. You don't need sympathy, you need solution. You don't need sympathy. Sympathy won't change your story. Sympathy won't change your story. Please listen to me. I give to you a mouth and wisdom that none of us can resist nor gainsay. Your mouth is to silence your enemies. He said, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. But my people are too civilized for that. They will not hearken to me. So, I gave them to the desires of their heart. I gave them up unto their own heart's loss. And they walked in their own counsels. They want to be respected. Don't talk like Papa who, eh, you better be careful. I wasn't Papa when I had it. I was myself a little boy who loved God and believed God wholeheartedly. I've lived by faith to this point. I would rather die believing God than doubt him. Yes. I've lived by faith to this point. Sir, this thing works. Yes, sir. There are many witnesses in this house. This thing works. <laughs> when I said I can never before, it was a matter of mockery. I can always say I can never before. What, is he using charm? 1982, this is 19, what is this one? 2019. I've never borrowed, I've never begged, I've never been hungry. Please, wait. if you can't say it, you won't say it. Yeah. Say with me, if I can't say it, I won't say it. If I can't say it, I won't say it. If I can't say it, I won't say it. If I can't say it, I won't say. Two months to completing this project, the roof was not completed. And I was in Kano. And God said to me, it took me only six days to create the world and the fullness thereof. I will not need two months to finish an ordinary building. Yes, 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 yes. Two months. Too much. So I came down and two months, too much became a new song. I said, say after me, two months, too much. Say it again. Two months. <laughs> Say it a minute. Two months. Amen. If you are ashamed of me and of my world in this weekend and daughter generation, I will also be ashamed of you before my father and his holy angels. So you can't say it. You won't see it. Yes, if it's too big for your mouth, it's too big for your hand. Yes, if you can't say it, you won't see it. Let everyone here that carried any form of ailment in his body say by this prophetic intervention, I am finally healed. I am free at last from every satanic oppression. And I'm free forever. Barrenness is over in my life. Satanic oppression is over in my life. Marital spell is broken from my life. 
career stagnation is over. <laughs> Business failure is over. I'm scaling new heights in ministry. I'm scaling new heights in my business. I'm scaling new heights in my career. Give the Lord a big half on the prayer. Give the Lord the biggest clap of praise, everybody. Now, every faith-fired word is prophetic. You know, the Bible is a more sure word of prophecy. So every time you pick the word of God and you release it through your mouth by faith, it's prophetic. And he said, if we say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast to the sea, I shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that all things you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. So it is prophetic. Every word of faith released from your mouth is prophetic. You are bound to see it if you refuse to doubt in your heart. If you are saying like the Father sent the Son, Jesus, did you see sickness in him? Could you imagine failure in business in him? Could you imagine marital failure in him? Could you imagine terminal disease in him? So whatever can be seen in Christ is illegal in your life. Yes. Because as the Father sent me, so send I. Mm. Yes. Whatever you can't imagine happen to you. Now listen to me. I had running nose for a long time, and I concluded it must be because of dusty road. One day it occurred to me: if Jesus were driving on this road, will his nose be running? I said no. No, he's a devil, he's not the dust. <laughs> so I went somewhere to preach. I took the handkerchief away. They thought maybe I mistakenly threw it away. I said, stop it. I told Jesus, if it will enter my mouth, I won't touch it. He stopped there 40 years ago. Never to be told. It's time to engage your tongue to win the battles of your life. It's time to open your tongue, release your tongue to win the victory over your battles. Yes, my wife said she had miscarriage. I said, it cannot happen. Can I have my food, please? It ended there. There was no repeat. There was no how you feel. You can't feel anything more than what I said. What I say by faith is created by God. You shall have whatever you say when you refuse to doubt it in your heart. All those amazing things about how faith empowers us to open the it will happen with faith in your heart and with the fire of his word in your mouth. Yes, yes, yes. No devil has an answer to it. No devil has an answer to that. That pregnancy was sustained. No prayer point on it. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ from today, yes. those six manifestations of faith shall begin to search forth in your life. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know why I put up my shoes? I will never say the next 40 years I am sick. Amen. Amen. Whatever the Holy Ghost teaches through you, it includes you, if you're interested. I'm interested because, uh, sir, it, it is not possible for me to die young. It's not. It's not. Neither will any of you die young. A child among us will die at 100. You remember that prophetic word in Isaiah 65, I'm beginning from verse 20. There shall be no more 
there's an infant of days, nor an old man who has not filled his days, for the child shall die a hundred years. Ooh. The child shall die a hundred years. 120 is our number of days as numbered by God. But when anybody goes early, they say a child died, it will be 100 years. So, wherever you are tonight, forget about the devil. If Jesus tarries, no devil can terminate your life. Anyone that's carrying a death sentence on his or her life, right now, under the sound of my voice, that verdict is declared known and void. In the name of Jesus. And as your days, so shall your strength be. As your days, so shall your strength be. Give the Lord one more time a big clap of it. Amen. Glory to God. Now, having seen the wonders of faith in this message, message and it's applicable to anyone in the body of Christ, it is important to find your place into that household of faith, the family of Jesus. Wherever you may be tonight under the sound of my voice, and you know that you know that you know that you are not born again yet. Whatever is born of God overcomes by faith. Until you are born again, faith can't work. Such work in your life. So wherever you are, you want to say yes to Jesus tonight. Somebody said, I'm not sure whether I'm saved or not. Then you are not. You can't be saved and not know. Therefore, wherever you are tonight, you want to turn your life over to Jesus. Across the nations of the earth. I'd like to pray with you. Please turn to your feet. Everyone that wants to give his own life to Christ, turn to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet wherever you are. This is your night of change. This is your night of change. Whatever is born of God only overcomes the world. And overcomes by faith. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up. All across the globe. In and outside of the faith tabernacle here, you want to turn your life over to Jesus, please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Remain standing, please. Now, there are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Jesus, reconnect back to God, and enter into their rest. You are there, you want to return from wherever you may have, may have gone away to. Jesus said, I'm ready to receive you. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I begin to experience the overcomer's life that pertains to the believers. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Now, everybody standing both in the first and second call, please move over to the eye closest to you. Church officials are there to welcome you there. Just move over to the eye closest to you. I'll be praying for you at that spot. In all the other locations, please approach the altar area. Approach the altar area. The pastors are waiting for you there to receive you as we pray together from here. Please approach the altar area wherever you are. Approach the altar area wherever you are around the world at this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 New birth is an experience money cannot buy. Jesus paid for it with his life. And it's real. It's handleable, it's touchable, it's feelable. It's no myth. May tonight be that experience in your life. <laughs> Please, officials, make sure that all the ones outside, all the ones under the tents are taken care of in these prayers. Shall we bow our heads for prayers, all of us that are standing for this prayer at this time? Those who are still coming to the front, please find your way there. Find your way there in the various places. Amen. Pray this prayer after me with your right hand lifted up and your heads bowed before the Lord. Lord Jesus, 
Say it loud. Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you all the days of my life. So help me, Jesus. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered with that blood all the days of your life. No force from hell shall draw you back from following Christ. You will serve him to the end. You will make heaven at the end of your journey. And the name of the Lord Jesus shall be glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations, congratulations. Church, give the Lord a big hand for this precious soul. Amen. Please complete those forms and pass them to those church officials around with you. Shall we all rise, please? Give the Lord the biggest clap offering. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. We are going to sing this song and close there. Now that my battle is over, I am more than a conqueror. Now that my battle is over, I, how many believe their battle is over tonight? How many believe that those prophetic words will answer in their life? How many believe that those prophetic words has answered in their life? Now that my battle is over, I am more than a conqueror. I'd like you to sing that prophetically. And as you are singing it, signs and wonders are taking place. As you are singing it, signs and wonders are taking place. You are waking up in the morning to a brand new world. Hallelujah. Now, lead us in that song. Now that my battle is over, I am more than a conqueror. You are singing it you, with your eyes closed. You are dancing the way you, you don't care who's looking at you. My battle is over. My, I, you can be name, numbering that, naming that battle. You are over. You are over. Now that my battle is over, I am more than a conqueror. Come on now, let's sing. Now my battle is over.
Hallelujah. God has never left himself without a witness. As you are dancing that dance, and many of you have already experienced that something has taken place in your life. Take your Bible and your bags and just dance here. We dance together and you go home and everybody will go home. All right? Something has taken place in your life. Some, some chain has been broken. Some things holding you down has been shattered. All across the nations of the earth, all that have experienced the touch of God in their life, as that song continues, and we keep celebrating Jesus, take your Bible, take your bag, come to the front, and then we celebrate God with you and closing this service. This dance is a miracle dance. This dance is a change of position dance. And as you are dancing in, God is changing your position. Hallelujah. Come on out. Now that my battle is over.
Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord Jesus the biggest club offering, everybody. Please be seated for a moment. Be seated for a moment. All view centers, please. Five minutes only. Take your testimonies. We have the record of all the others, and we will keep them and reference you when we need more details. For this mighty act of God in our midst, and the Lord thy God in the midst of you is mighty, he will say, he will rejoice about you with singing. For this triumphant instant testimonies, one more time, give the Lord a big clap of. Please at ten oh eight, we are rounding off. You hear your name, you come down quickly there, and then we go. We do about six or seven. Hallelujah. And of Philip, for twenty years, has suffered from prostate cancer, gonorrhea, and mild stroke. All three, Jesus set him free right now to the glory of God. Amen. You came from where? From where? Accra, Ghana. Ghana. Came all the way from Accra, Ghana? Yes. Amen. Yes. What are the things? Prostate. Prostate cancer? Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? Mild stroke. And mild stroke. All cleared off in one moment. Yes. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. On Wachuku Chibweke for 32 years has suffered from hernia. But right now, in the midst of the service, Jesus set him free and is free indeed. Hallelujah. Grace. Tunde for 40 years has had a lump on the neck. But in the midst of the declaration, that lump instantly disappeared and she set free to the glory of God. Hallelujah. From where? From where? From where are you? From Ibadan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 40 years of lump in the neck disappeared on his own. Give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. Atinuke Ibidakbo and Adebajo for seven years has had an inflated stomach. But in the midst of the declaration that inflation disappeared, she set free to the glory of God. Give the Lord praise. Atinuke Ibidakbo. Amen. Hallelujah. As what Victor Osaho had is just as his, he obeyed the instruction to put his feet on the ground, a stick came out of his ear. 
instantly. Is this a stick or a bone? Give the Lord praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Osinachi Benedict, for seven years, has suffered from ulcer pains and unusual body movement. But right now, as this, as he stepped his foot on the floor, Jesus set her free, and she's free indeed. Hallelujah. Bukola Roberts has had for 20 years chronic running nose. But right now, in the midst of the declaration, Jesus set her free and she's free indeed. Hallelujah! That oppression is over. Amen. Blessing for three years has had psychosomatic disorder. But as she put her feet on the ground, Instantly, Jesus set her free. Hallelujah. One more only, one more only. Hallelujah. Samson Abigail, for 17 years, has suffered from partial stroke. But right now, in the midst of the service, Jesus set her free. The stroke has been broken. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Shall we all rise tonight? Too many to number. Job chapter 9, chapter verse 10 is this walking. Great wonders. Great things and wonders without number. Our God is a doer of great things. Past finding out and wonders without number. Every testimony is an act of God and every testimony is significant. Church, lift up your two hands and thank God for this mighty deliverance tonight. Thank God for confirming his word in our midst. Give him praise, everybody. Amen. All these testimonies are declared permanent. Amen. Your encounters with God tonight and with his word is declared permanent. Amen. All across the nations of the earth, Shiloh 2019 shall be your manifest Shiloh of release. God is releasing you from the realms of concerns to the realm of command. God is releasing you from the prison house of life into your palace before the eyes of all. This is a confirmation that whatever prophetic word you receive tonight is to delivered for a testimony. And so shall it be. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Please go back to your seat as we close in the service tonight. What was it? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please know that tomorrow Friday is Friday and it's our celebration of the nations. Amen. 
dedication of Shiloh babies, dedication of Shiloh marriages, and I pray that whatever you see with your eyes tomorrow that you desire will be replicated in your life. No destiny shall be stranded again. In the name of Jesus. Every blessing proclaimed upon the nations shall answer like fire. Every blessing proclaimed upon this nation, Nigeria, the host nation, shall answer with fire. Every planting of the devil in the life of anyone on Shiloh ground shall be rooted out forever. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Have you been blessed tonight? Yes. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks and celebrate him for weeks. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Get seated and wear your shoes. You are treading on the heads of the devil from hand. It's made your feet like brass. As your day, so shall your son be. Thank you, Jesus. As you are putting your shoes on, will you be giving thanks to God for the much blessing we have received tonight? For the much blessing we have received tonight, God is faithful, is worthy of our praise. 291 people came out to share their testimonies tonight. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Thank Him and thank Him. It's never too much thanking Him. Bless His name, bless His name. The miracles continue. The testimonies continue. Many, many of us on your way going, to your place, the miracles are manifesting, more healings taking place that you will come to share when you wake up in the morning in the precious name of Jesus. Keep giving thanks to God. Keep thanking Him from the depth of your heart. Keep thanking Him. Maybe you saw only a little sign of your healing tonight. As you thank Him like the one leper, it will be perfected on your way going. It will be perfected Maybe you are saying it lightly or slightly. As you go, those two eyes shall be fully open, giving glory to God. The healings are perfected. The miracles are perfected. The faithful God has done it. And whatsoever he does shall be forever. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him praise. Now rise to your feet. And one more time, wave your hand and say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to Jesus. Say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. Thank you and thank you and thank you, King of glory. Thank you and thank you. Thank you and thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Tomorrow, the session's commences with the Shiloh prayer hour, 5.30 a.m. God is waking you up into a brand new day, brand new beginning to the glory and praise of his name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Joyfully, let us share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Shiloh 2019. Breaking limits. Congratulate your neighbors as you go.
life of every participant. No one should miss this annual prophetic event for any reason. It shall lead to the opening of new and strange chapters to the life of every participant. There are many, many people today that have no identity. Shiloh 2019 will turn your story around. Some have thought we never amount to anything in your life. Watch it. They will come bowing down to you. This year will be different in your life. Connect. Shiloh will be the dawn of a new day for your life.